Drunken Fist 2. Zombie hangover. When you first hear Drunken Fist, you probably assume that you're gonna see some iteration of Jackie Chan being sauced and running around, climbing and jumping and using his expert kung fu skills to take down large groups of enemies in beautiful Legend of the Drunken Fist fashion. Then you saw a zombie hangover and realized, this isn't gonna be like that at all. Now on its surface, this is kind of a crazy and weird action fighting game cloaked in a beat em up style that is both wild and disturbing but also never serious. The graphics are cartoony and the movement is slow and discombobulated, which, if you ever had a few too many, the illusion actually plays. But y'all better not be drinking unless you're of age. Moving on. The humor in Drunken Fist 2 is crude, Massacre. and it's got Final Destination slash carry level goriness, and it's way past goofy with this satirical and whimsical presentation, and it's actually kind of fun. First, let's talk about the story. A drunk rocker passes out after a weak binge, wakes up, and boom, zombie apocalypse. He realizes that there are zombies around and that everything's abandoned and goes on to perform the only logical thing in this situation, which is, of course, to drink more. Not to find family, not to find friends, colleagues, your girl, not to find your pets, it's to drink more. Yeah, that, that's it. That's the story. Now, as far as skill trees and upgrades, there aren't any. Which brings me to the gameplay. Now I know some of y'all are like, yo Yonko, why would I even play this? There's no story, there's no skill tree, there's no upgrades, it's not open world. This ain't the 80s and 90s, what's the point? And to which I would say, the point is, sometimes there's beauty and simplicity. The whole game of Zombie Fist 2 Drunken Hangover takes place in probably what would be a few hours in the day or morning of the character waking up. In other words, it's daytime when the game starts and it's daytime when the game ends. no experience of an indication of time changing or nighttime while playing throughout the game. And the entirety of the game is eight levels. And in the first level, it's basically just a tutorial and practice run like usual, you know, the regular deck game. Essentially, they hip you to the controls. They let you know that square is punch and X is kick, circle is sweep, the left and right analog sticks are used for the movement of the camera, R2 and L2 are to switch between enemy lock-ons, R1 is to drink a bottle and L1 is to urinate. Now of course with the premise of the game, it's only right that you have access to bottles and urination and these do go hand in hand. And as the levels go on, you realize that there isn't too much to the level's design. It's pretty linear. There isn't much exploration, but there doesn't need to be. In classic beat em up style fashion, there's just groups of enemies you're gonna have to beat to get to the next level. As stated earlier, level 1 is really just a tutorial level. Level 2, you run into a zombie with an axe. And you're like, does this Okay, alright, that's different, but I got it. Then you get to level three and it starts to go left. In part because your level completion requirement starts to go up and most because you run into this really annoying zombie type that has a jump attack and it causes you to remember that triangle also has a command which acts as a dodge in this game and it's called a jump back and quite honestly starts to become a necessity. And after getting clapped a few times on level three, you begin to realize that the urinating in the bottles aren't just wacky gimmicks or collector's items. They actually serve a purpose, an important one. The bottle is used to replenish your health, and the urination is actually a meter of how full your bladder is, which is constantly filling up with movement. And the more you move, the faster it fills up. Which, if y'all remember, this is a fighting game, and we have to move around and fight a lot. So you will have to empty your bladder quite frequently. The point is, you use urine for everything in this game. You want to empty your bladder, you urinate. You want to mark your territory, you urinate. You want to booby trap enemies, you urinate. You want to make a slip and slide, you urinate. You don't want to die in this game, you urinate. <laughs> nah, let me stop playing. But for real though, the booby trap and the not dying thing, that was serious. If you don't empty your bladder in this game, your health goes down, gradually, until you empty it. And also, if you urinate on the spot and you can get some of the enemies to walk over it, they will slip. But I won't lie, not emptying my bladder did get me clapped a couple of times in this game. I remember when I said that in level 3, it started to go left. Well, by levels 4 and 5, it had gone fully left field. One of the first zombies you see in level 4, if not the first zombie you see in level 4, has pulled a gat and started popping caps. This is when I got upset because, yo, what the f***? Since when did zombies, who by the way should have no neurological functionality at all, start turning into straight gangsters where they turn in the gun to the side for a kill shot? Is it just me? Or, like, what's going on? Who allowed this? 
Anyways, getting back to the levels, between levels 5 and 6, there was a hazmat zombie that now started to spit up acid. These zombies were acting as the ward off slash protection zombies. But of course, here's the kicker y'all, it's not as though the new zombie types took the place of other zombies. Now, it had just became a combination of all these zombie types and they were mixed in different sections of the level and started to build a crazy zombie dream team. My peoples, my peoples, understand that the level of difficulty didn't just come from the new zombie types. Each level took more hits to kill a zombie, and the zombie's attacks were stronger. The jumping bitch from level 3 was a different jumping bitch in level 6. The damage had increased. Not to mention the number of bottles in each level have felt like they decreased. But I think it was mostly just that they had been placed strategically so it wasn't as easy to get to them without a fight. But the great thing was that the bottles did replenish your health 100% every time and it only took one. And where I definitely gotta give credit where credit is due is that you never felt like the balance was tipped too far over to us as the players or too far over to the enemies as the NPCs. Alright, I lied a little bit. There were certain situations where I felt like the enemies were a little OP, but it wasn't so much that as it was that there would be four different zombie types and it'd have you pinned in a corner or against the truck, which really is just part of the difficulty more so than anything. But still, that was some Which brings me to the ridiculous levels of 7 and 8. At this point, it had gone so far left that it was out of bounds. Disrespectful, if you will. Out of pocket, whatever you want to call it. Because in level 7, they introduced this new damn commando type zombie that had a freaking AK. And by level 8, there was a bunch of these with AKs. And of course, at that point, I was like, but why? Who told y'all this was okay? Pissing me off. Anyways, the point is, I enjoyed Drunken Fist 2 Zombie Hangover. As far as the combos go, they felt a little makeshift, although it did feel like in a couple of instances that there were some strings where the combos were actually quite fluid. But there is no move list, so you kind of just got to make them up as you go. And there are weapons. There's one weapon on each level, and they all resemble some kind of bat type of weapon. And they can be a one-hit kill. If you hold the square button, it'll do that on any of the zombies, which is something that you want to take into account, especially in the later levels. You might want to beat up some of the zombies, kill them, and then come back and get the weapon that's in the same level to go take on a harder group. Because your uses with each weapon are limited. I'd argue that you get maybe like five kills out of it, which honestly isn't bad because in some levels, that's a third of the kills you need to finish the level. Not counting level eight, because it's only a sixth on level eight, seeing as how you have to beat 30 zombies to move on to the finish line. If I had to give it a little Yonko grade, I'd give it an F for fun. If I had to give it a number score, it'd be like a 7. It was a fun game. I'll definitely be playing it a couple more times. If you have time and there's some games that you just kind of want to play with a little bit of replayability, a beat em up that's not taking itself too seriously, this would be a fun game for y'all. And with all that being said, I want to thank East Asia Soft for hooking me up with a review copy. This was probably my first review copy and I do want to start doing more reviews on the channel, so I definitely want to thank them for that. I want to say congratulations to making a fun game and I'm going to catch all of y'all in the next vid, which will be coming up sometime soon. Alright? Peace. Todd, can you play that again?